Welcome back to the bubble, ladies and gentlemen. After getting my ass bitch slapped on uh, multiplayer, I realized that I will need some practice. And uh, what better way is there to get practice than to actually keep just playing multiplayer? Seems like we have a lot less resources this time around, so hopefully it will be, it will be going a bit slower. However, it is free for all, and I think I have the least amount of victories. Tapak, I think, had like 11 maybe, and the other three had like 130 something victories. So, of course, they are all a bit more experienced than me when it comes to playing multiplayer. Um, however, I will just keep, uh, keep playing and keep practicing and keep doing my best, and uh, hopefully, you will enjoy this one as well. It seems to be, is it? T peace time left. Could it be peace time? That we have 20 minutes of peace time. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, it's gonna be interesting. So then it won't, uh, most likely, won't be any. There won't be any action for the first like um, 20 minutes, most likely. Or yeah. Um, but I'll just try to do my thing and be alive for as long as I possibly can. And uh, if that's only like 20 minutes, then so be it. I'm just gonna try out playing basically the same uh, strategy I always use. Just uh, getting uh, the unit production up as fast as possible, getting the uh, food production up, etc, etc, and just cram out as many units as I can. I'm playing as Denmark. Uh, might not, maybe not the best uh, civilization, but I, at least from the first uh, Cossacks, I remember that their uh, Musketeers, Grenadiers from the 18th century were really good units. I don't know if that followed uh, along to Cossacks 3, but uh, either way, I'm gonna try playing as Denmark. I will be facing like Prussia, uh, Prussia and Ukraine, I think, and some other countries. Scotland will be having one. Uh, will be playing as well. So I will be facing um, I will be facing some fast infantry from uh, from their civilization. You remember their sword clansmen, clan swordsmen, whatever. They jog, so they are a bit faster than uh, regular infantry. However, they won't be able to come to the 18th century to get 18th century units, so they will be a bit later, late, a, a bit weaker late game, unless they're able to capture a bunch of uh, a bunch of units, of course. In which case, they will certainly be a lot faster. I was way too slow in getting uh, my peasants. I completely forgot that I had peasant uh, production to to attend to. Uh, so that's a bit. Uh, that was very good. And now I have too few resources to basically get anything done, get anything built. Uh, so not the best of starts. If you look at the points, I am in the middle basically. Two above, two below. Uh, yeah, I don't know really what to expect. When I play the other multiplayer game, a lot of the uh, opponents went heavy on 17th century musketeers and not many pikemen at all. So maybe that's the way to go. I mean, just cramming out a bunch of 17th century musketeers. I mean, they are still really uh, vulnerable to fast cavalry or any kind of cavalry and also close combat infantry as well. Unless they're able to mow them down before they, um, the infantry reaches the musketeers, of course. Now, finally, we're starting to get somewhere with our economy. Finally. Need another mine to get some gold production going. Man, this was a slow start. I really should have been a lot faster on, uh, on the peasant production. That's too bad. But uh, wood production is going up, 2,100 um, wood, 
in order to get the next town hall. Of course, 2,100 stone as well. But stone is the easy resource to get. What is that guy doing over there? You will be building the gold mine. You can start building on the other gold mine. It's really good that I have my back against the wall like this because then I won't be surrounded. I hope at least that it's a good idea. That is a good thing. Okay. We need to get some wood coming, guys. But two gold mines will be will be built, so at least that's good. And also, I really need to get a production on my uh, get a production of my um, peasants up a lot. And I will place out some sentries here and there, so that they're um, so no none of them will be coming up with like sish cossacks and then start destroying me using them. Fast cavalry, of course, is really lethal if you're able to capture peasants. However, the last round that I played, artillery the uh, artillery wasn't able to be built, cannon towers weren't able to be built, diplomatic center weren't able to be built, and also you couldn't capture anything. So that was, that was a really strange game mode, I think. Now we're on our way to the second uh, town center, town hall. And wow, if you look at the points from Tapaka, he's way up in the lead. And Ambrona comes as well. However, I'm still ahead of Nadi and Centurion. Uh, I don't know what that means, playing... Uh, playing... Um, multiplayer, though. Might be good. Might mean absolutely nothing at all. And when this uh, house is built, when the town, next town hall is built, then I'm going to send all of them to uh, stone excavation as soon as possible. There we go. And these guys can go on lumber production as well. However, I also need iron. Okay, so at least uh, we're not dead last, and uh, our production is uh, getting getting along nicely as well. So that's good. And now we are on the second level with one of our gold mines, so that's really good as well. Getting up the academy is also really important. Okay, that one will be filled, that one as well. Only had uh, three, but place for the spot of five. So we need to really get ahead of our um, of our resource production. So far, seventy-three points. Tapaka, one hundred and thirteen. Centurion, forty-four. Nari, fifty-eight. Amrona, one hundred and nine. As long as none of them focus on me, hopefully I will be doing just fine. I just hope to be like, drifting along, minding my own business, until I feel comfortable, um, until I feel confident that I'll actually be able to at least put up a fight. very low on food that's because I've taken basically all of my peasants from food to get like uh, stone and wood and get working on the mines and things like that these guys will start working on the first stable finally and um, on the other multiplayer game that I played a lot of the um, my opponents did no clo no uh, melee units at all like only 17th century dragoons, 17th century musketeers, and then they came in mass with uh, with those units. So I'm gonna try something similar right here. Of course, I need to upgrade my firepower as well as my defense of these guys. 14 is not a lot of damage to make. That's that's really quite weak, unfortunately. But the food production is starting to come up. I don't know what food is produced by peasants in the field and by fish boats at the port. Okay, cool. And look at that. We have a scout in our midst in our midst. That scout is dead now though. 
So we know that we have one opponent coming from the east. And I don't... Was it Amrona, maybe? Yeah, I think it was Amrona. So one of the stronger players, hands down, will most likely pay me a visit soon. And I do not like the sound of that at all. That at all. Okay. Getting some more peasants into the mines, of course, really important to keep a production of economy going. I'm gonna build a church as well, because of course priests have healing, uh, healing powers. So that's really good. 6,300 for the next town hall, 2,500 for the next barracks, and I would really, really need the next barracks. And that was, yeah, it was gold that I was running a bit low on. But any second now, I'm going to get the, the sufficient amount of gold. And then we're building our next barracks. I've been really, uh, really slow in getting my next barrack. And look at the points coming up right now. Nari and Amro, I think it was Nari that was, all, that was also below me. But now I'm 124 points, almost up and taking the lead. Way to go, Nari. See, now I have one idle peasant. I'm gonna build an artillery depot, get um, the design new woodworking tool so that I will increase my woodcutting efficiency by 100%, so it will double my, um, my wood income. And now I also got a stable, so these guys will need to start producing as well. However, they are so slow, really, really slow. unfortunately. However, I have six idle peasants and I want them to create to start building some mines right over there because I will need coal and iron by the buckets. And now I get stone excavation as well and the points are starting to rack up our centurion is right uh, is really annoying at my heels right now and I need more wood in order to get my diplomatic center as well uh, how much wood was requested 4900 so I'll get them to start working on that food production is coming along I will not just be upgrading to upgrade now because I'm uh, quite scarce on resources. Now, however, I was able to create diplomatic center, so I will. I get some really good cheap units out of that, and 5,000 wood to get my next stable. I'm sorry for burping, everyone. There we go, now we're getting the next stable. Really important stuff. Really important stuff. And how much resources next for this upgrade? 2,000 coal, 3,000 iron, and 600 gold. So I'll soon be able to uh, decrease the time it takes for my cavalry to be produced, which is of course really important. A lot of things are really important, but that's because a lot of things are really important, of course. So let's see. No idle peasants so far. We have one mine that isn't filled to the brim though. Sending some peasants to that one. And since I'm able to create cannon towers and also artillery depots with artillery, most likely um, they are also able to capture my peasants. Which means that if you get another if you get another civilization going, you're golden. When it comes to uh, you're able to produce a lot more soldiers and things like that, really important. 
6,900. I'm almost there on the cavalry front, 8,200, 5,300. So let's do it like this, stone, coal, thank you, iron, thank you, and thank you. So now the cavalry will be produced faster and that's good. And now we've got our third town hall, also really important. I'm gonna produce a couple of dragoons because they are really strong. Uh, however, they cost gold and they cost gold to maintain as well. So they are really expensive, however, they deal quite a lot of damage for only for a gold only unit. Okay, we are turning out just fine so far. Points are coming along almost up in the same level as Ambrona. Most likely, there are. Oh! Right, now the peace time is over, so now I will be attacked quite a bit, most likely. Quite a bit. Okay, getting this upgrade so the um, fields won't tire out on me. Also building another cannon tower. What? Do I need? I need 6,500 gold to get up to the 18th century, and I will be selling stone in order to get there. However, I also need a lot of coal to get to the next level right there. So 6,500 something. I don't want to just empty out all of my resources just to get to the 18th century. Now I need a lot of food and a lot of gold. Sold my food to get gold. How ironic. And then stone to food. And now we're almost there to get to the 18th century. Come on, 20,000 food. There we go, 18th century, here we come. Very low on gold though. Let's see if I'm actually able to capture that peasant. Or, no, I'm not able to capture peasants. That's weird. And they are of course building fences so that they can keep an eye on what I'm doing. Very very smart of them at all, like scouting fences. So it's Ukraine that really wants to mess with me, okay? I also need to get to my Oh, I can't even get the balloons, so I'm not able to uh, see the whole map. That's a bit annoying. Really a bit annoying, okay. I'm going with Hussars right now because I want some fast cavalry to go around. I've really been uh, dozing off a bit too much on uh, my unit production, being slow on the uh, being slow on the second town hall and the peasant production and things like that. Not very good so far. I will not be conducting it. Oh my god! I can just burn it. I just remembered. Is that goes really slow taking that one down okay I have a lot of idle peasants set them on stone excavation and then just sell it for gold and then getting our 18th century barracks yay
So I have 10 mercenary archers available and I will use them to burn down the, uh, the palisade. I don't even know how far that palis palisade uh, can see. And wow. Their aim is not good at all. Wow, that's a really sturdy palisade. Okay, we need some dwellings right now because we are pop caps. And that means that we will not be getting any units out until that issue is solved. And I really need this upgrade. 6,900. 6,900. That's a lot of resources. That's a lot of gold. In order to be able to build faster. But I really need that upgrade. 2,400. And what did I need in order to get this one? 12,520 gold. Coal. So let's just sell stone for coal. And then we get this upgrade to get a lot more out of our stone production. Because then the stone will really keep coming in and then the, um, the economy will be better as well. Very low on gold though. That's not very good. Not very good. I will be putting some sentries here and there. And I know that Ukraine has really strong infantry, ranged infantry, however. So they will not be able to fight close combat unless they capture uh, units from another civilization. So that's why these, um, these hussars will come in handy. However, it doesn't seem like I'm able to capture any units. So at least that means, of course, that they won't be able to capture mine either. 2,400. There we go. Give it the next stable. And I'll send these to destroy the Palisades as well. And soon we'll have our third stable. Gold is really not going fast up though. What do I need to upgrade? 4,900. Yeah, I'm not getting up in that just by selling stone. And the gold production is so slow, most likely because I have a lot of mercenaries. That could be the issue. 20... 17th, uh, 18th century must. Yeah, dragoons or mounted uh, mounted musketeers, but dragoons from the uh, from the diplomatic center. And I do have a couple of idle peasants, so I will send them on some mine construction and sending out a couple of sentries to protect it as well. Wow, it's not going very fast for these guys. Is it just me, or did everyone's everything start going a lot more slowly right now? I mean, look at the speed. Maybe this is the the speed that it's always been, but it just feels a lot slower, and it's not lagging at all either. It's just that everyone is moving like in molasses. Okay. Oh, someone actually killed my, um, someone actually killed my pikemen. How dare they.
getting some more upgrades because upgrading the mines are always really important from an economic standpoint and soon I will have my 18th century barracks up and running. Is it 55,000 maybe? And now I am attacked by an enemy. Your unit attacks an enemy. Okay, maybe it's still the palisade. I don't know. So now we're starting to hit target at a range and in melee. So we're getting with the 18th century musketeers. That's what we're gonna do. 8,000 gold to construct the next one. So far, my opponents actually seem quite peaceful. Don't really know why, but I'll take every every breather I can get. <clears throat> So far I can't construct anything else, so now I guess we'll just have to get going with the economy. And this one... This was the building that I also upgraded. Pressing Ctrl P to select all idle peasants. Now let's see what's happening right here. I'm just gonna send these guys ahead. Tapaka is... Oh my god, Amrona has been destroyed by Tapaka. Wow. That means that Tapaka most likely, most likely also has, or maybe, no, they couldn't uh, capture, right? But Amrona is dead, that's why they're not attacking me. So now it should be a bit more tranquil on the eastern front at least. Let's see what I need for the next 8,000. Yeah, still 8,000. Go for it. Who figures? There we go. Next 18th century barracks, please. I want to see where their village was. gonna set out a perimeter of cannon towers as well so far it seems to only be empty palisades everywhere but and now most likely naughty is the one that's getting attacked oh my god I'm gonna get my ass handed to me by a tapaka later on oh my god so far, I'm still and I still can't afford one cannon costs four thousand gold. Is it usually that expensive? Because that feels a bit steep, I think. Now we're gonna get this upgrade so we can build faster. I can't believe we haven't gotten that one yet. Okay, here they are. Let's see if I can capture these mines from Tapaka. Because he was obviously able to destroy and capture them somehow. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna get some... There we go. Now we're gonna get some Ukrainian units out of this as well. Don't really know how well that's gonna turn out. Tapaka will most likely not be very pleased with me for capturing... Uh, or was it Amrono actually? Amrono was actually able to produce. Wow, welcome back from the dead Amrona. That's awesome. Let's see, 400 units of 
of 17th century musketeers. I would really, oh my god, sorry. I would actually doubt that they will be able to deal a lot of damage. Uh, but of course, I hope so. So, now I just destroyed my Ukrainian gold mine, and hopefully Amrona will be able to come back and... Um, will be able to come back and uh, assist in taking out Tapaka. Because now I will be next. I'm next in line for the onslaught of Tapaka. Let's see what I can get them to do. Maybe start chopping down some lumber. I'm gonna stop my production of peasants, of Danish peasants. So far, I don't have any idle mines, but I do have a lot of stone. So I will be selling my stone in order to get some gold. What do I need? 11,800 stone. So I'm selling that one to create yet another, yet another 18th century barrack. And also just try to keep, um, have some production of my Ukrainian units as well. Let's see, I can forge harnesses for the cavalry to be produced faster already. And Ukraine is a very, um, is a very cavalry driven society. They have a lot of really powerful cavalry. And of course powerful infantry as well. However, they are unable to um, go into melee. So they will only be fighting uh, from a distance. They will only be shooting. All of these will be producing these Serdukes, these Ukrainian Serdukes. And did I actually build? No, there it is. And I'll only be going with Sish Cossacks from the Ukrainian society. They are fast, really, really fast. Let's see what else. I just want to keep building some more barracks and I will use my idle Danish peasants. Oh, naughty. Is it naughty right over here? Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. To get to work on the lumber, I need more of that, of course. And also, I will be selling a lot of stone yet again to get more gold so that I can upgrade my gold mines so that I'll be able to sustain my unit production of everything that I need to build. Eight peasants right over there, 39 peasants right over there, 32. I will just keep building my cannon towers because those are of course really important as well. Choosing all of my Ukrainian, um, all of my Ukrainian barracks to produce troops from them. Two thousand five hundred and fifty. Let's see if I can just use my hussars to do some scouting around the map. So we can see what's up all over this place. Let's see if I can capture these units. I could capture this one. So I got some Hungarian peasants as well. And I will be using them 
to build some new um, a new civilization as well to get even more population space and everything like that. Why can't I afford? Of course, I need a lot more both wood and gold. So there we go. Now I need more wood. Now I just got it. Send all my Hungarian peasants over there. Where did all of my... Where did all of my Hussars go? Let's see. Still got some more of them. Oh wow, they are really aggressive. <laughs> but okay, doesn't seem like they will be an issue so far. More Cossacks. Uh, let's see what idle peasants we got going for us. Building three uh, 18th century barracks. Oh wow. Their purple had quite, quite the army. Let's see what these guys can do against that. Sending all of them on uh, move and attack. So, we still have some Hungarian peasants left. I want you to start building on the... Uh, to start building on the Hungarian civilization. I'm getting even more Uh, getting even more units out right now but I'm really interested in seeing in um, what kind of damage my 17th century musketeers will be able to make because there's a lot oh wow uh, let's see I do still have some 17th century units that I want gone off the payroll so to speak because my gold production is really dwindling but I will send the idle peasants that I have at my disposal straight down the gold mines and now I can stop creating uh, Ukrainian peasants as well Let's see, Hungarian units, making one stable, and I'm gonna create both Hajduks and 17th century pikemen out of this one, and another stable. If you look point-wise, wow, Amrona is really coming back, coming back from the dead. Why does it feel like that gonna bite me in the ass that I didn't destroy Amrona right away? I don't know. Let's see. I have production of all of those buildings. All of those as well. However, I really need to upgrade my troops a little bit. and get my Sardiuk production going as well. Okay. So this is where everything's gonna go down most likely. Did it really go this slow before as well? Because it feels like it slowed down something crazy right now.
but at least I'm still alive. I'm still standing. Always low on gold though, always low on gold. Oh my god! So that's where their units were at. Not those, not those, and not those, but everyone else. And just start attacking. Oh, this is crazy. They had so many troops, where did they get all their armies from? It looks like, so far at least, I'm able to, I was able to push them back. Oh yeah, I'm out of coal, and that me or I'm out of iron, and that means that they're not able to fire. There we go. Oh, and now the game speed came back as well. No, now it went slow again. Okay, so now I just realized that they do in fact have an army, and it's a quite big one. does seem to lag a bit though, now I'm not able to upgrade my troops anymore, that's really weird. And those guys aren't moving anymore at all, I'm not even able to delete them. Okay, there were some players that were having uh, issues to uh, connectivity issues I guess. I desperately need more cavalry because their army is super strong right now it seems. Let's see and now they're coming from the other side instead. So all of them up here to defend against the Cossacks. That's the name of the game, literally. Oh really, they just kicked the ass of all of my um, Hungarian peasants. Well, not all of them, I still have a couple left. But they are coming from all over the place right now. All over the place. That's why the Cossacks are so freaking annoying, because they're so fast. Okay, at least we got our civilization back. For now. Let's see what happened with all of the Hungarians. Gonna pop out another academy. And let's see, all the Serdukes sending all of them down southeast. All of the 18th century dragoons I will want with me right here. And um, that's basically it that I will use for for attack so far. I will still need to keep a pressure. Keep up the pressure.
So there we go. And we also need a lot more gold. I'm really happy that they weren't able to um, to take any of my gold mines. At least not that I'm aware of. Let's see, what was the other one? The other one, the other one was right there. And here comes their massive freaking army. Let's see what kind of damage these guys can deal against them. And also, I just noticed that my cannon towers actually did quite a good job against them. So I will be upgrading these ones. And they did destroy one of my gold mines. Gosh darn it. And also they are really fast, so I'll need to send some Cossacks down, trying to get them. But damn, they deal a lot of damage. Are any of my can- oh, they are actually firing. But it seems like I'm losing all of my troops right now. They are firing though, so that's good. And they are coming with Cossacks there as well. Damn! This guy really knew how to uh, bust a move, was the first phrase that got into my mind. But not bust a move as much as kick an ass. It's so many troops and now they're just running over all of my civilization. If you look at my points, I'm pretty much wiped out right now. That sucks. The Sir Dukes were so strong. And I don't know how, but my gold was always running out. Always running out of gold. But congratulations to Tapaka. I mean, this player wiped everyone out throughout the whole game, basically. So I really need to give some props to that player. He was, uh, he or she was clearly uh, the better player today. I don't know why did my production of units stop? The scourge of God. I just got an achievement called the Scourge of God. I wonder what wonder what that is. But I will try to keep on scourging. Houses prevent me from firing, and some, everything else prevents me from firing. Things always prevents me from firing, it seems. But I did manage to get one last huzzah out of it. Out of it. Awesome. And we're back. Even so, just for a little while. And running out of iron as well. Do I have any iron mines left at all? Oh, I do, awesome. And do I have any Oh my god. All of these Cossacks, man. It's crazy. I don't even know if I... Oh, I still require a mill in order to build a marketplace. Oh darn.
This was a really fun game though. It's always almost been an hour. And not that much action, but Tapaka really brought it. I mean, the amount of troops that player had were crazy to say the least. And these waves of Cossacks, Ukrainian Cossacks, I mean, they can just wipe out anything that they set their mind to. And since I'm out of iron, I don't really have that much of a unit production to put against these guys. Of course I could just go out with some Grenadiers. However, they can't fire, so let's get some round shears going. And they can't fire either way. Now I miss like trash units, something that just costs like wood and food. Is my iron mine still active? Yes, it is. They are just picking down every unit that I... Oh my god. Here we go. Yeah, this is most likely the end. At least I uh, was able to take some of their troops with me. Nadi, however, is coming up. I would like to see how that guy's turning out. But yeah, one hour is most likely enough. Oh, this one. I want to see... Uh... Oh my god. I mean, yeah, not that impressive. Most of the units are just peasants. If I would have been able to hold out my, uh, my unit production, I don't see a reason as to why I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to defend against this one. He's clearly, he was clearly running out. But yeah. Still a very fun game though, hope you enjoyed watching it, might split it up into two different episodes because it's an hour long, I want to keep it about half an hour each. Uh, survived for a longer time this uh, time around though, most likely because I was never attacked, which uh, I can until Tapaka really um, got sick of me hanging around I guess. Uh, but still, hope you enjoyed this episode, I really enjoyed playing it, it was... Um, not as difficult as the other ones until I got attacked, then it got really difficult. But still hope you enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.